Hello guys, welcome to Random Phantom, and I'm going to be showing you today a free alternative to Inkscape, which is a free program, but it's harder to use, and Adobe Illustrator, which is expensive and easier to use than Inkscape. So this is sort of the best of both worlds. Now, it's not a perfect program, but it's, this program is called Gravit Designer. I'll put a link to where you can get Gravit Designer in the description below, but let's get started. So, first off, we opened up Gravit Designer and we have many different options here. So, you can make you know, blog covers, Facebook covers, you know, iPhone X size graphics, I mean, that sort of stuff. But for now, we're just going to be making just 1080p HD graphics. So there we go, there's our HD size graphic there, now, if I'll go show you Inkscape and just so you can see that right off the bat Gravit Designer is easier to use, it's also faster, as you can see Gravit Designer loaded quite a bit faster than Inkscape. And Inkscape didn't even ask like what size of graphic you want to make. It just gave you this basically paper size graphic here. And there's document properties and here's where you can go and you can change stuff. It's it's set up for making printouts of stuff. Yeah, ask for measurements and millimeters and all. It, that's all right, but. If you're wanting to make, you know, perfect graphics for your monitor and all, and wallpapers and that sort of thing, then Gravit Designer is a better choice then. So let's get started. Another thing, you notice we have an X, you, this program has tabs, so like, if you want, you can open up another graphic, so here is the thumbnail for this video. Now, as you notice, there's no text there. This program does have a few bugs, but that's okay. And if it, if the text doesn't appear, then just close and reopen the, the project. So there we go. There's our text there. And it might be best to have a whole ton of programs open, but that's alright. So there's the thumbnail for this video now I'll go ahead and I'll follow that and I'll just make it in this video so everything for the background is 0, 0, 050 just like that and that's how easy it was to change the background here and Inkscape is probably not that simple in the page setup this is more like Adobe Illustrator from screenshots that I've seen so this is more intuitive and all than Inkscape. Now Inkscape is a free open source program. This is a free program. It's not necessarily open source, but it's still free. I mean, if you want, you can pay to get cloud storage, but that's not required and it's not required for you to log in. Adobe cannot say that about their own programs. You have to log in for everything. Should you even have to give them your birth date just to use one of their phone apps, I mean it's Adobe Premiere something, but yeah, you have to log in with an Adobe account, which is kind of dumb. Which means that they can track you easier, so this program being this way is pretty nice. So to add text you have a simple text button you can change the font so we'll go ahead and we'll change that to the font that I use for most of my graphics and my YouTube channel which is product sans it's a Google font so 255 
and we'll make this font bigger as well. We'll make it 72. I like that. There we go. Double click on it to edit. The best free Adobe Illustrator. Inkscape alternative. Of course, right now it's not perfectly centered, it's slightly off. You want to center it? There you go. You want to put it in the, in the exact middle? You just click another button, it's just like that. It's pretty easy. You can also move that text by using the arrow keys. So if you want to move it up, you can do that. But for now we'll just move it just like this and as you can see there's guidelines to help you make it perfectly centered so there you go it's centered horizontally you can import graphics it doesn't matter if they're SVG or not but this program works to make vector graphics and it also makes raster graphics now I'd recommend making a vector graphic if you want scalable graphics that don't lose quality when you make them bigger or if you want more detailed graphics then you use a, a raster graphic so like a PNG or a JPEG so we'll go ahead and we'll import the logo that I made for my channel which is also a, it's a vector graphic and actually we'll open up the PNG first And as you can see, when we stretch that, it got slightly blurrier. So that's that. That's a, a raster graphic. Now we'll place the vector graphic version. Drag it down here to this corner and stretch it out. And as you can see, it didn't lose quality. It all stayed pretty much the same size. Now we'll go ahead and we'll put that in the bottom right hand corner just like I normally do. Lock the aspect ratio so that way we miss if you don't lock the aspect ratio you can stretch it out like that and then it looks wonky so we'll lock it so that you can't do that. Well alright. Is it not locking? Whatever. grab the corner it stretches so it's locked you unlock it you can stretch it any way you want so we don't want to do that we're gonna lock it and we'll make this three hundred fifty pixels so there you go right there in the bottom right hand corner there's that now, since this is a quick show off I won't be going in depth but as you can see this program is pretty easy to work with to make graphics I can export this as a SVG and it will scale well or I can export it as a PNG and it doesn't scale well but you can have maybe more detail and color so this with vector graphic it's it's math based graphics so they're drawn drawing equations basically in lines and with raster graphics it's data for every single pixel so all those pixels can be different colors and that's how you get more detail in raster graphics with vector graphics since it's drawing math equations obviously it's going to be more difficult to have detail because you have more equations and stuff but yeah that's basically how rec vector graphics work we can go ahead and we can import the logo for for this program go ahead good my pictures and stuff there we go we'll make that 512 pixels and we'll make that perfectly centered so working in this program you get the center buttons and all versus 
with programs like paint.net you don't have those buttons so if we draw like a simple circle or actually we'll just draw a rectangle a rectangle not select it no not like that draw a field shape there's our rectangle if you want to center it well as you can see we don't have the option to center it I mean, this program it's it's more for different stuff it's more like a, a painting program I mean, it is literally called paint on that so it's more that sort of thing you can edit pictures in it and all too it's got effects and stuff you can have so if you want to add like a a vignette effect you can do that in here versus with gravit designer it don't have that those effects is more for drawing perfectly shaped stuff so this is more for making logos and stuff and stuff like this there you go that looks pretty good right there that placement we can make that a little a little lower so there's our eye-catching graphic It saves in a .gv design that's easy to edit and all. It's made for this program. We'll go to our thumbnails to where I save. And we'll go ahead and we'll overwrite our other one. Yes, we want to replace it. There it is. We got our nice thumbnail already made. You you can of course export as a SVG, which is scalable. You can you can even make a PDF out of it. But for now, we'll do this. Save, replace that. There you go. There's our thumbnail that we made for this video. Now this program it also has tabs which is nice so you can open up other projects and so we'll go ahead and we'll open up a recent one. So this is a thumbnail that I made for another project. It's got two pictures I imported. Th these pictures I made them with a program on my phone called Screener where it allows you to select a device that you have. And then you can overlay a picture on there from your inventory, so your gallery. So I put the PUBG Mobile wallpaper there. Then on top of that, I put text for like a frame rate counter, you know, a simulated frame rate counter. So like showing, you know, 18 frames per second here on the left, and over here on the right, we got, you know, 30. So it basically turned from not playable into playable. And there's our text and our channel logo yeah this isn't super consistent but yeah whatever looks fine you can also move logos precisely by using the arrow keys you can drag them around and there's guidelines for it so if you want to have it you know the top of it centered in the middle of this image you can do that and that looks weird so we're not going to do that we'll put it back here There we have it. I moved it pretty precisely, just like that. There are 20 pixels up and 20 pixels left. So there you go. There's our logo. It's been moved a little bit, and we can always export this again and overwrite the existing one. And 
you can zoom in a, a whole lot with this program too, which is pretty neat. <laughs> or you can have it fit all, but yeah. So thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. If you dislike it, well, you know where that button is, but you'd be really cool not to hit it. And subscribe, hit the notification bell, and there's multiple ways you can help support my channel and help it grow and become better and higher quality. So if you want to do that, you can donate to me by PayPal, I'll put a link for that. You can donate to me by Patreon, I'll put a link for that as well. And you can also buy merch from my Spreadshirt shop. And currently, I'm also doing a challenge, it's the 5 to 500 challenge. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. And thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and peace!